So last video, we did a deep dive on what widgets actually are. And this video, we're going to take it one step further. And it's how those widgets get rendered onto the actual screen. So how do we go from a widget tree like this to the actual screen? We're going to go through the logic that Flutter goes through. And then at the end, we're going to show a little demo proving that that's how it actually works. So let's get into it. All right, from the last video about widgets, you remember I briefly touched upon how the phrase everything is a widget isn't actually accurate. Well, if for the most part is when you're writing the code, everything is a widget. But what actually goes on behind the scenes that those widgets get converted to an element and then those elements get converted into a render object. So to go along with that idea, there's three aspects that you can kind of think about. Each of those control a different aspect of the actual rendering of the UI. So we have the configure aspect, that is our widgets. We want to give a configuration of kind of what we want to see happen. And another way to think about what a widget is, it's kind of like a blueprint for what we want to see in our app. So next we have the life cycle, that is our elements. And the elements are what manages the life cycle of what is actually being seen on the screen. Then the last part is the actual painting onto the screen. And that is done using render objects. And those render objects are in charge of the actual pixels that are getting drawn onto the screen. So we have a widget that gives you a configuration or blueprint for what you want. We have the element which takes that blueprint and holds the life cycle of that element. And then we have the render object that actually paints that element onto the screen. So now you might have the question of why do there have to be three types of trees in order to paint something on the screen? Why can't we just use one? And there's a really good explanation for that. So if you remember from the last video, we said how all widgets are immutable. This, even the stateful widgets, they're technically immutable, but they hold a state that controls whether that widget needs to be rebuilt or not. So now since all those widgets are immutable, that means we have to rebuild almost everything every time any update happens. That would take a lot of resources, but that's not actually what happens behind the scene. So we established that widgets are immutable and will have to be updated on every single change. But even though the actual widgets have to be updated, that doesn't mean the rest of the process has to be updated. And I think this can be best explained by going through an actual example. So let's pretend we have the following basic app. All it has is a text and a button. And when you click the button, it swaps the text. But we're only going to focus on this part of the tree just to keep things a little easier to draw and concise. So this is what the widget tree looks like for that one part. So here we have the three... Uh, so here we have the three. All right, so here we have the three trees. We have the widget tree, the element tree, and the render object tree. You'll notice they're almost identical. And although in the actual software, maybe it might be slightly different, but for the most part, it should be pretty close. So the first time the render object gets built, you have your widget that creates an element. And here's what the actual function looks like inside Flutter code. So you have create render object function. And you notice all the things get assigned to it. We don't care about the details, but just know a create render object function exists. So now let's say the user clicks this button right here. Since we said widgets are immutable, that means this text widget goes away and gets replaced by a new text widget, which holds the value of by. But since these two are of the same type, something a little special happens. When you go to check the element, there is a function that checks whether it's the same type. And here's what the actual function within the Flutter code looks like. It's called can update. It checks for the runtime type of the old widget and the runtime type of the new widget. We didn't assign these widgets a key, so we don't really care about that part. But if you do assign a key, then this part gets checked as well. So after that can update function returns either a true or false. If it returns a false, it means it can't up just update. We're going to call the create render object function again. But the key part here is if it returns true, meaning it's the same type and it can't update, we will just call this update render object function, which is almost identical to the create object function, but it doesn't create a whole new object. It just assigns new values. So now let's say this new object is not actually a text. It's instead a container or something. In that case, it's going to check the types. There will be different types. And then a new render object is created. So let me show that to you with some actual code. Okay, so here we have a really basic app. All it is is just a column with two widgets. Widget one says hi, widget two says bye. Here on the right, we have the Flutter widget inspector pulled up and we're starting with the hi and we can refresh this, make sure everything's correct. We go to the text, you will see the text is hi. The render object 
changed is a render object has its own ID. Here it's A4D25. We'll make a note of that on this little notepad. And now whenever we click change widget, it will change to buy and buy is of the same type. And we can go up, refresh, and go back to text. You'll see the text is now buy and the render object is A4D25, which is exactly the same as our high widget. But now if we change this to widget three, which is just a container, and we can go back to the same starting position, refresh the text, and we see the new render object type is C1568. If we switch to a different widget, a container widget, refresh, go to container. Remember, if you remember from the last video, a container is actually a lot more complicated. It's a constraint box and color box and all this other stuff. For this, only just these two. But you will notice the render object ID is completely different. The text widget got completely wiped out from the widget tree. And even if we go back and refresh to the actual text widget, we'll notice the render object ID is still different. That's because the last one got completely thrown out. So that's how widgets go from being just widgets to elements and then render objects. And I'll give you guys one last thing before I go away. And if you notice, this container is actually a constraint box and color box. So how does that get represented in the element and widget tree? If you remember at the beginning, I said the element, widget, and render object trees are not actually exactly the same. They're just kind of the same in concept. So there's two big concepts that kind of take care of all of this stuff. Those are the component element and the render object element. So I think the best way to explain it again is going through an actual example. So let's say we have the following widget tree. We have a column with a container, a button, and a text. So this is what the element tree would actually look like. So we have component element is CE and render object element is ROE. So the column is the render object element. So it's at the top. And then if we go to the button, render object element. And then for container, we get two elements for one container. Why is that? You remember the container is actually made up of a lot of smaller widgets. It's not just the container widget. So the component element is kind of the container part of the element. Then the actual render object element is the actual element that will get rendered onto the screen. According to the Flutter documentation, the component element is the host element and the render object element is the one that actually gives information to the render object so it can be rendered. And the same goes with text. If you remember from the example, we actually were looking at the rich text. So text is the wrapper or which for this case will be the component element and the rich text with all the values for the render object will be in the render object element. So the render object tree will actually consist of the render objects that are actually getting displayed. So it looks something like this, where the render object elements will correlate to an actual render object. So if you want to look more into this topic, you can go to the architectural overview again. Here's the whole render object component element section, and you can kind of learn about that last part a little more. So that's it for this video. If you enjoyed these type of videos, make sure to let me know in the comments. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share if you enjoy the video, and thanks for watching.